Welcome to the 2022 Math and AI for Girls Award Ceremony. To the contestants, I congratulate you on entering this competition, and I am so excited that you're here today. And now, sit tight. We have a fun and interactive award ceremony planned for today. Before we begin, let me introduce myself. My name is Natalie Shell, and I am an incoming freshman at Stanford University, as well as the president and founder of Math and AI for Girls. Like many of you, I have participated in a lot of math and STEM competitions, camps, events, and research internships. The goal of this organization is to help girls achieve success at the highest levels in math and AI by offering them access to resources that can help them on their math and or AI journey. Math and AI for Girls started with a website www.mathandaiforgirls.org, feel free to search it up, and it later expanded into a nonprofit organization, hosting an annual math and AI competition for middle school girls. This year, I am joined by a whole team of math and AI for girls volunteers who are drawn from last year's winners and are now part of this effort. They're amazing. And when it is their turn to speak, I'll have each of them introduce themselves. Now, in addition to our wonderful volunteers, there is another thing that makes today's award ceremony particularly special. In fact, we are in one of the most historically significant sites in the history of technology. Can anyone guess where we are today? Put it in the chat. So we are right outside the HP garage where Bill Hewlett and Dave Packer founded HP all the way back in 1939. Let's take a look, shall we? Here we have a few copies of the oscillator, which was their first ever product, as well as some of the technology they used, including the drill press, right here. As we walk on through this historical monument, we will also be able to see some of their living quarters. It's a rather humble abode. But think of how such a magnificent company had such small beginnings. Dave Packard and Bill Hewlett graduated Stanford in 1934. They moved into this house right here, renting the downstairs for, you'll never guess, $45 a month. Houses in this area are now worth over $5 million. The house is divided into two levels. The mayor who owned the house lived in the top level well, the bottom was rented out to Dave Packer and his wife, Lucille. We'll first go into the dining room. Here we have our live on-site audience. Everyone give a wave. This here is the Murphy bed where Dave and his wife slept back in the early days of HP. Over here, once more, we have another copy of the oscillator. This was actually used in the Disney movie, Fantasia. And since this is the first ever version of the HP oscillator, it means that Walt Disney was one of HP's first ever customers. Pretty incredible, huh? Let's have a round of applause for our wonderful sponsor, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And speaking of sponsors, this year, in addition to Hewlett Packard Enterprise, we are also sponsored by AI startup Automation Anywhere, JP Morgan Chase, and D.E. Shaw. We are also partnered with organizations Math Counts and AI for All. And now we're going to hear from a representative from HPE, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Deanna Huang is the Director of the Office of Operations, Legal, and Administrative Affairs at HPE. Deanna is a lawyer by background and has practiced technology and intellectual property law for almost 20 years. Deanna serves on HPE CEO, Executive Inclusion and Diversity Council. Recently, she was named as one of the most influential women in Silicon Valley by the Silicon Valley Business Journal. Now let's hear from Deanna. Thanks so much, Natalie. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Deanna Kwong, and I'm honored to be here today on behalf of Hewlett Packard Enterprise Company's executive leaders to congratulate all of this year's winners of the Math and AI for Girls competition. As Natalie mentioned, it's a particularly special year to be at the award ceremony because we are broadcasting live.
from the age garage where starting back in 1938, a year before they formed the company formally, Bill Hewitt and Dave Packard decided to take a risk and they made a product and a company that led to the birth of Silicon Valley. And I mentioned the origin days of our company because back then, Bill and Dave believed in giving back to the community. They be believed in being a force for good. And that force for good is an essential element of our culture now. And that's why we are so proud to help drive forward un unconditional inclusivity and trying to help narrow the gender gap in STEM professions by sponsoring such programs as this one. I hope you all are incredibly proud of yourselves today. Um, and I hope you walk away from this experience, taking away two gifts from this program. The first is empowerment. I hope you feel empowered because you've developed a core skill set of logical thinking and critical analysis that will help you succeed no matter what specific career or job you eventually pursue, hopefully something in STEM. I hope you feel empowered by developing confidence. You have the courage to take a first step in trying out this very competitive, very intense map competition and thriving and succeeding in it. I hope you look back at this experience to know that you can do hard things, that you can set high goals, and that you truly can succeed and thrive in a career in STEM. And I hope you feel also a gift of community from this experience. Um, I have been a technology lawyer for almost 20 years, and it's a very male-dominated industry. Many times I've been the only woman in the room, and I've faced unconscious biases because of my gender. I've faced microaggressions and, unfortunately, even macroaggressions in the workplace. And I've been able to stay focused and continue thriving in an industry and career I love, where it marries the intersection of business, technology, and law, because I have a very strong community of women uplifting other women. And I hope you all get to know one another. I hope you exchange contact information. I hope you stay in touch because you'll see it move forward in your education and as you move into the professional world, having a very strong set of allies who understand the successes you've experienced, the struggles you've experienced will help you go farther. And as Natalie mentioned, I was very honored two days ago to receive um, the Women of Influence Award from Silicon Valley Business Journal. And as I was sitting there at the award ceremony, where all of us awardees were asked to share a six word tidbit of wisdom, I uh, heard two things that I thought were very empowering that I wanted to remember to share with all of you because I wanted to pay forward um, that gift of knowledge and that gift that I received from such a powerful group of women within Silicon Valley. And the first is, rethink the journey um, by shattering limits. I, I know as women in STEM, as girls in STEM, we face a lot of challenges, but I want you to feel empowered by this experience to challenge the status quo. And the second piece of um, wisdom that I learned that I wanna pay forward to you all is, impossibilities are invitations, dare to discover. I didn't author those words, but they were so powerful to me because I want you all to dare to discover where your passion and your demonstrated talent for STEM take you. I want you to dare to discover, to set high goals, and hopefully I will see you someday, 10 to 15 years from now, in a career in STEM. And for that, I want to say thank you for the time today. Again, congratulations. And now it is my honor to introduce by video our Hewlett Packard Enterprise CEO, Antonio Neri, who has some words of congratulations and inspiration for you. Hello, I am Antonio Neri, President and CEO of Hewlett Packard Enterprise. At HP, we know that diverse teams make better teams, and that's why we are proud to sponsor today's competition. I want to start off by congratulating each of you for being here. You have already done the most difficult part. You have put in the time to study, practice, and master your skills. I cannot wait to see the results of your hard work. However, it is not all about winning competitions. It is about nurturing and pursuing a love for math and technology. As a CEO, it is incredibly exciting to see the next generation pushing for better, for their education, and for themselves. I am incredibly proud of each of you for participating and choosing to do something that is not easy. And I hope you continue to showing up for competition like this one and learning even more about STEP. The opportunity this field can bring to you if you just hold on to your relentless curiosity and desire to learn are endless. With that, I wish each of you good luck and I hope you enjoy today's event.
Thank you to Deanna and Antonio Neri for your inspiring messages to all of us. And now we are going to go through today's agenda. And would you look at that? We are already through three items. First, my introduction and tour, followed by Deanna's speech on behalf of HBE and Antonio Neri's congratulatory video to all participants. Coming up next, the Math and AI for Girls team will go through the competition statistics and info. Then we'll have a fun interactive activity. I would recommend you have a pen, paper, and a phone ready for this activity. Next, we will hear from Nidhi Mehta Shukla, the co-founder of Automation Anywhere, who will give a congratulatory video to all participants. Then we'll hear from today's guest speaker, Dr. Jamie Wells, who will talk about her own journey in STEM and answer a few of your questions. We'll then have another interactive activity from the Math and AI for Girls team before the moment you've all been waiting for, the announcement of the winners. And then we will have a brief closing. So first I'm going to introduce a member of the Math and AI for Girls team, Shin Mei, who will be helping me with the introduction of our statistics for today. Shin Mei, I'll turn it over to you. Hi everyone, my name is Shin Mei Goyle and I'm a rising sophomore from New York. I'm very passionate about math and computer science, and this year I am the technical officer and problem set developer for the math and AI for girls team. I, aside from math, I also enjoy playing my clarinet. This year's competition generated over 5,000 views on the math and AI for girls website. These 5,000 views then translated into over 400 draft submissions, a 33% increase from last year. But not all of the draft submissions became entries. So all of you here today are the brave ones, the tenacious ones, and the ones who pulled through and submitted an entry. As one of last year's contestants, I know it isn't easy, so pat yourself on the back. This year, we had representation from fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, but the eighth graders did an especially impressive job representing more than one third of our contestants. We also had entries across 26 different states, with many from Texas, California, New Jersey, and Connecticut. But the state with the most entries is my home state, New York, with 33 entries. A little more information about all of you. You have many hobbies and activities in common. 45 of you competed in math counts, 52 in the AMC series, 19 in the American Invitational Mathematics Examination, or the AMI, and four in the USA Junior Math Olympiad. 11 of you even complete, competed in the USACO, the USA Computing Olympiad. Additionally, the most commonly mentioned hobbies included piano, violin, swimming, video games, dance, and robotics. And finally, we pulled a few fat, cool facts from your bios. This year's contestants included a three-time gold medalist in the Houston Open Taekwondo Tournament, someone who's top three in her age group nationally in chess, and someone who even runs her own business on Etsy. Talk about a variety of interests. Something you may remember from this year's competition is that we asked you to name your problem set with your favorite animals. Here is the resulting data. Pretty messy, huh? Dogs took home the win with 20 votes. But besides the most popular animals, there were a few which also stood out to us, so we had to include them in this slide. First up, we have the Quokka and the Shiba Inu, absolutely adorable. The Oriental Dwarf Kingfisher had the prettiest colors. The Axolotl looked very cool. And finally, the shiny pig toe, some sort of clam, is here because its name is too funny. And now here are some word clouds generated from your first and second essay. The first essay consists of words like math, STEM, competitions, learn, team, love, award, and journey, showing what a motivated, talented, and passionate group you are. If you squint, Amy, math counts, and Nancy are also in there. In the second essay, the words are more forward-looking. We see technology, virtual, artificial, life, energy, space, and Mars. 
And based on your responses to the second essay and the promising words shown here, I have no doubt that all of you will make your mark on technology and the STEM world. And since all of you are such numerical folks, we figured we'd want to see some of this year's key numbers. This year's problem set was graded out of 60 points. Scores ranged from zero all the way to 59.5. The mean was 35 and the median was 36.4. And a quarter of the contestants scored higher than 51.1. Wow. It seems we need to make the problem set even harder. And now on to the essays. The essays were scored out of 40 points, ranging from 17 to 37.3, with a median of 26 and a mean of 27.3. And look, half the scores were between 24 and 30. It was a pretty close one. Wondering where you might fall on these graphs? Well, stay tuned. We've got the announcement of the winners, which just might give you an idea. And now for our first interactivity. Since you guys are so good at math, let's have a mini math competition right here, right now. Those of you who are returning contestants, you may remember this activity from last year. I would now like to turn it over to another one of our Math and AI for Girls team members, Snigtha, who will be presenting this Kahoot. There we go. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Natalie. Um, my name is Snikta Mahanraj, and I am a sophomore from Connecticut. Well, I'll be a rising sophomore. And I am on the award ceremony planning and marketing teams this year. Besides math and science, I also love playing the violin. And I'll be hosting our first interactive activity of the day. Now it's time to take out your phone on or a separate device and go to the following website, www.kahoot.it and I definitely recommend using a pen and paper. So Kahoot will ask multiple choice questions. The question will show for a few um, seconds and you will have to see what, which of the four responses that appear is the correct answer. There will be a timer on the shared Zoom screen telling you how much time you have left. And here on the left is a demo of what the shared Zoom screen would look like. And on the right is what your phone or other device would look like. Um, and so you must tap what you think is the correct answer on your device. And for this one, I suggest that you would go for the red button. You only get credit for correct answers. And the faster you are, the more credit you will receive. There will be 14 questions plus a test question in the beginning. And the winner will get a $25 Amazon gift card. So hopefully you guys are on Kahoot by now. And it's asking for a game pin. The pin is 9441346. It is also on the screen if you didn't catch that. And please make sure to use your full real name when it asks for a nickname. And so now I will give you a moment to register. Our next question, how many positive integers less than or equal to 33 are divisible by two, three, or 11? This is a bit of a tricky question, so make sure you can try to get it within the 30 seconds. Our answer choices are 21, 19, 23, and 24. You have about 15 seconds left to respond. Yeah, this one's a bit tricky, but hopefully you guys can get it. You have 10 seconds left and about 25 responses, about half of you guys so far. Come on, five more seconds, I believe in you. Okay, so 16 of you got the correct answer. This one was a little bit tricky, but great job to you guys. Yeah, it was a tough round. 21 players lost their answer streak. But we have Adia in first place. Great job. And then Amber and Sophie. It's a very tight race right now. So let's see who can maintain first place. So our next question, if x does not equal zero and x squared equals y squared, what is the sum of all possible values of x plus y divided by x? Our answer choices are negative one, zero, one, and two. This one's a little bit tricky as well, but you have 15 more seconds to respond. I'm sure you guys got this. We have 20, no, 30 responses. Getting up there, very quick. Five more seconds. Right, 
23 of you, at least the majority of you have gotten it. We have 15 people go for answer choice blue of zero, but the correct answer was indeed two. Shreya has a streak with five correct answers in a row. Great job on that. And we still have Adi on first place and Shreya in second. Our next question is, what is the least positive integer with at least 10 positive integer divisors? We have an answer choice of 3,628,800, 36, 42, and 48. You have 15 more seconds to respond and choose what you think is the correct answer. You already have half of the responses in. Let's see if the other half can respond within the 10 seconds. We're very, very close. Okay, Let's see now. And 24 of you guys got the correct answer. Great job. Two people went for the 3 million option, which I think is great, but we have a large majority that chose 48. Great job. And so up 17 places, we have Sam as the highest climber. Great job. And Adria still keeping first place. Let's see if anyone can catch up and overtake that. Okay, so this was a bit of a tricky question, but good luck with this. The first seven terms of a sequence are 0, 5, 5, 10, 15, 25, and 40. What would the next term in this sequence be? Is it 35, or would it be 45, or maybe 55, or our last option of 65? We have about 10 more seconds to respond. We already have 40 responses, so let's see if the last few can get that in within the last five seconds we have. Okay, 38 of you got the correct answer. Great job. Now, drum roll, please. Let's see what the podium looks like. In third place with 15 out of 15, we have Anika got every single question right. Second place is Selena with 14 out of 15. And first place, let's see, is Adia, 15 out of 15. Great job, congratulations. And our runner ups are Angie and Judy. So congrats on the Kahoot. I hope you guys had a lot of fun with that. And so we will be contacting the winner about the prize, which again is the $25 Amazon gift card. So congratulations. I hope you guys had fun with this. Wow, that was exciting. Snakefoot, that was amazing. And contestant, you guys are so smart. And now shifting gears, we are going to hear from Needy Meta Shukla the co-founder and social impact officer of AI Startup Automation Anywhere. She has recorded a quick message to all of you. Let's hear from her. Hello, everyone. I'm Neeti Shukla. I'm a co-founder at Automation Anywhere. We are an intelligent automation platform that uses robotic process automation and artificial intelligence to solve business and IT process issues. I am super excited for Automation Anywhere to sponsor the Math and AI for Girls competition. I met Natalie Shell in 2020 and her passion for math and STEM shone through. And I am not surprised at all that this competition has grown by leaps and bounds just in these last two years. Natalie tells me there were over 200 drafts this year from over 24 states. How wonderful. I am a big believer in technology and artificial intelligence to help solve world issues, the problems we face today. And I'm super passionate for women to be part of the solution set, for girls to step up and be part of the conversations, be, have a seat at the table to make sure that these solutions are not just inclusive, but they are the best solutions. And to have the best solutions, I think women must have a seat at the table. So I applaud all of you all the participants, all the winners, and Natalie, you too, for the wonderful work you're doing, for the wonderful commitment and passion you're showing in STEM, in mathematics, in artificial intelligence. And I wish you the very, very best. This next generation is so tech savvy, is so passionate about using technology and having women be part of that conversation is a must. Coco Chanel said, a girl should be two things, who and what she wants. And I am so proud of every one of you for stepping up to be the who and what 
you want to be for the world. Best of luck. I wish to see all of you again next year. And Natalie, well done. Well done in bringing all these girls together and moving STEM and math in the direction that it's supposed to go. Thank you so much, Nadi. Now, if you'll give me one moment. Speaking of accomplished women in STEM, I would like to introduce today's guest speaker. Dr. Jamie Wells is an adjunct professor and advisory leadership board member at Drexel University. She is an award-winning board certified physician and pediatrician and the president and founder of the Yale Alumni Health Network. I had the honor of meeting her last summer when she served as the director of the Research Science Institute RSI program. Dr. Wells is incredibly inspiring, passionate, and one of the kindest and most accomplished people I know, which is why she is the perfect guest speaker for today's event. And now I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Wells. Can you hear me? <laughs> Thank you so much, Natalie. I think everyone needs to applaud themselves and Natalie and all of her team. Let's get some energy. We're gonna have some fun talking about STEM. I'm really excited about where you all are in your lives and <laughs> I'm, I'm looking to you to, to transform the future, but congratulations to all of the 2022 participants. I'm truly in awe of your talents, perseverance and enthusiasm. As I said, I'm, I'm incredibly impressed and have a huge nod of gratitude to Natalie Shell and everyone working tirelessly to create this extraordinary and impactful experience for all of you as well. I'd like to thank your sponsors uh, who have clearly and partners who've clearly shown that they value math and AI for girls important mission that undoubtedly will foster social societal and medical advancement. I was a unicorn at your age. There were very few girls. Sometimes I was the only one in many of my STEM pursuits, literally. <laughs> a big year was getting a second girl on the math team, which didn't occur until the later part of high school. Programs like math and AI for girls didn't exist. But I was fortunate that my grandparents lived with us growing up. We all contributed to their home health care. My grandfather nurtured my curiosity and love of learning. He said you had to do mental gymnastics every day to keep your mind alert. He taught me the Pythagorean theorem when I was four years old. We did calculus problems together and exchanged drawings daily. He developed intractable intention tremors later in life. And instead of giving up on his passions for art, music, and mathematics, he used his engineering background to design stabilizing contraptions for his upper extremity so he could still perform the activities he truly adored. He was an early ally, taught me to see failure as just one other way not to do something, and never once implied being a girl would pose any sort of limitation on my dreams. As a result, when I was in third grade, I was doing sixth grade math. Thereafter, I transferred schools and was told they would accommodate my math skills. But when I arrived, they didn't believe a girl could really do that kind of math and insisted I get independently tested, which only proved I was really working at a ninth grade level. As you could imagine, and based on a lot of the comments of prior speakers today, this ruffled some feathers and so began a long storied history of being underestimated. That I was in the first co-ed class of a nearly 300 year all male school amplified the issue. The first female to do this or that was an endless refrain, which is why when I attended the Research Science Institute as a teenager, I found my people, several of whom are still in my life in profound ways. Newly in my life is Natalie and she's now gonna be a lifer whether she <laughs> wants to or not. Uh, I have been in a wedding, been the physician for their families, a work colleague and involved in countless more interactions or collaborations. The beauty of such programs like Math and AI for Girls and RSI are the lifelong relationships you are so very privileged to develop both personally and professionally. I had the distinct pleasure of being the director for the preeminent 38th Annual Research Science Institute, which is collaboratively sponsored by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and the nonprofit Center for Excellence in Education for which 81 of the top STEM scholars were competitively selected worldwide. RSI, which is held at MIT, is the most prestigious international summer research program in the world for high school students. 
a cost-free intensive six-week summer program. It brings together top STEM talent for the opportunity to conduct original cutting edge research under the direction of mentors who are renowned scientists. The program includes social and cultural activities, rigorous instruction, a lecture series of notable luminaries, and culminates in a symposium where students deliver conference style oral and written reports on their findings. RSI is the flagship program of CEE, founded in 1983 by the late Admiral Hyman Rickover and Joanne P. De Janeiro, CEE president, whose mission is to nurture high school and university scholars to careers of excellence and leadership in STEM and build a synergistic global community. From a pioneer in CRISPR gene editing technology to the co-founder of Pinterest to a professor's network-based mathematical approach to predicting COVID-19, RSI alumni are world leaders in STEM and business. Running the program was a full circle moment for me that I will forever cherish. And I encourage you to continue to do the things that you have never done, never allowing fear to inhibit your growth. Doing so allowed me to exceed metrics not previously experienced by the program and meaningfully pay it forward to the next generation, many of whom are finding great success in competitions, presenting at conferences, or are first authoring papers in esteemed scientific journals, and have made tremendous friendships the, along the way. It was truly a career highlight, and being Natalie Shell's RSI director was the icing on the cake. RSI is not the only mode to achieve enrichment in STEM. There are many fulfilling pathways that abound and I would encourage you to create your own should an unmet need require a solution. A strong foundation in STEM is a vital tool in your arsenal that not only serves societal progress and facilitates limitless career agility, but also hones interpersonal skills, human understanding, empathy, and resilience. There is always a workaround. When I felt there was an ever widening gap between policy and medical practice compromising patient care and safety, I decided to use my voice as an educational advocate. I went from seeing patients and being affiliated with three hospitals to doing extensive outreach and publishing over 400 articles on med tech innovations, health policy and disease, STEM education, drug pricing, and more to shine a light on gaps in the healthcare system to inform the public and policymakers. It is a great time for STEM, knowledge is cumulative and the career avenues to pursue are unlimited as is your evolution. It is never too late to refine your course or shift to a realm at the forefront. You write your own story. Throughout my life, I've been a pioneer by accident or intention. I referenced being among the first females to attend an all-male school. After medical school, I was told I was the only female in the Northeast applying to neurosurgery. I started my career in that field before switching to pediatrics. At Drexel Biomed, I'm thrilled to be helping develop the curriculum and teach in the nation's first degree program in the newly emerging field of pediatric engineering. Having been steered by an engineer in early childhood, I find my participation in this arena especially heartwarming. Taking such paths isn't always easy, but I have gratitude for the strength I've cultivated in my outlook to see challenges I encounter no longer as obstacles, but opportunities. Now, when I shock those who underestimate me, it is much more fun than it is frustrating. We tend to remember the quote unquote, girls can't do math or when's the doctor coming in a front, but I am proud and happy to report the quote to the world you are one person, but to us you are the world unquote statements after saving an infant are much more rampant and invaluable. Learning occurs in every setting if you let it. Everyone is doing the best they can. No one has been 15 or 40 before and we each struggle with different fears that limit our beliefs. But this I know, when you consistently deliver excellence, lead by example and show don't tell, you transform the naysayers into the most loyal of allies. You are living in an exciting time where the mantra is morphing into, of course she did. If it doesn't exist, create it. Look at Natalie. You are en route to changing the world too. Each and every one of you has the ability to do so. Value the allies. There will be many in your corner. Together, your efforts are boundless and always be building community. When it comes to quote unquote success, what, however you choose to define it, I will do my best to impart some lessons I've learned along the way. First, get rid of the box the world tries to put you in. It is imaginary, imposed by others to limit your potential and imagination for what you can accomplish. This is their issue, not yours. Don't take ownership of their issue. Lessons will be, will be learned, minds will open by the example you set and the excellence you deliver. Second, go where you are valued. Fight for opportunities, but learn when it is time to leave because every environment you find yourself in is not designed to nurture your growth and progress. There is always another often better way. Finally, gain new skills and perspective. Do things outside of your comfort zone. Continue the dialogue beyond your bubble. I believe the greatest lost innovation occurs at the interdisciplinary knowledge gaps. Be a silo slayer and resist inertia. As you chart your own path, it is all okay, albeit 
if it follows a straight line or a squiggle. No one else is you, and that is a gift. The most quote unquote successful people are comfortable being uncomfortable. If you stumble, keep it moving, learn the lesson and facilitate momentum. Indecision is as much of an action as a decisive one, but can keep you stuck. Give yourself a deadline of how long you're gonna remain stuck and course correct. This is something we all try to do and, and don't succeed at all the time, but it's a lofty goal. Align with those you respect whose act actions match their words. Stay in touch with those who inspire you and always apply. Don't take yourself out of the game. Ask for what you want. I'm a yes before no person, which is why incredible experiences in and out of STEM have presented themselves. Augment and develop all facets of your life as this will keep you continually learning. I am honored to have played such an integral role in families' lives in the practice of medicine, educated the next generation who will go further than I have ever, could have ever dreamed, and advocated extensively for STEM and the highest quality healthcare. I'm also floored. I have been a meme that has gone viral several times, portrayed myself with actors for a TV show that was later dubbed in Spanish and I don't speak Spanish, <laughs> won a syndicated children's game show and have operated heavy machinery, having flattened a car into a pancake with a bulldozer. Joy is as essential to success and the human experience. In the end, what is success? It will be different for everyone. What I aspire to, no matter the relationship or the endeavor, can be summed up by this quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson, quote, to laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch or a redeemed social condition to know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived, this is to have succeeded, end quote. A STEM foundation is an amazing tool you can use to achieve such success throughout all of life cycles, personally and professionally. I'm always happy to hear from you should I be, ever be of help in any way. So don't hesitate to reach out and thank you for listening. I, I'm truly inspired by all of you. Dr. Wells, thank you so, so much. Personally, that was some of the best advice I have ever heard. <laughs> and to all of the girls here today, us at Math and AI for Girls will always be here for you. We will be in your corner, as Dr. Wells puts it. And now we can move on to the Q&A segment of today's interview with Dr. Wells. During her, um, during her talk, a few of you put some of your questions in the chat and we also received a few questions before the award ceremony, which I'm going to be pulling from. The first question is, how did your journey start in STEM and how did you realize you're passionate about medicine and or research? Well, first and foremost, I come from a medical family. So I went on home visits. I believe in an old world style of medicine. So even when I was in practice, 100% of my patients had my cell phone and email. Um, I knew what was going on in their life. I went to Swiss, Sweet Sixteens. You want to understand where you want to use an empathetic lens and understand where people are coming from, and that's your greatest. And with that knowledge, that's the greatest way you can facilitate their success and positive outcomes. But I would say it was very influential by my family. As I said, I have multiple members of the family who were in medicine. I excelled in math and science, so it was a natural, logical next step. And all of my grandparents lived with me throughout childhood at different points, and we all contributed to their home health care. So I would definitely say that had considerable effect of my interest and passion for STEM. And I was really a content animal and loved learning, naturally curious. Uh, so I think there were many influences with regard to that. And I always valued and was mission driven. And for me, no matter what it is that I'm doing, I need to feel I'm making a meaningful impact. So it just seemed like the natural next step. Thank you for that. That's very fair. We're definitely influenced by those around us and our pursuit of career and even with study in university. So another question that's came in for you is, have you ever felt discouraged? Or maybe have there ever been any incidents with imposter syndrome? You know, I think every single person feels imposter syndrome. I don't think anybody is 100% confident 24-7 every day of the week year round. Uh, so I would definitely say I, my, my grandfather always said youth is wasted on the, uh, youth is wasted on the young in terms of, of, uh, the wisdom that I have now, uh, have been from the life lessons that I have endured. As I said, it, you know, I'm so used to have been underestimated when I was your age, that would be frustrating. 
I would always present to my mother an injustice that I felt needed to be right, <laughs> righted. And her response was always, I agree with you, go write a letter, which tended to diffuse me from doing it because it felt like more work to do necessarily. <laughs> so I had to really believe in it to pursue that passion. But I would say, I mean, every single thing that I did was always from, even in, in adulthood, when I went out for co-ed football in Central Park, I was picked last, it never ends. Nobody put anyone on me. So I had to get four touchdowns to show them kind of what's up. But I would say, yes, I've been discouraged. And the thing that I've learned, uh, I've been disappointed in people I thought would, um, you know, rally or rise to the occasion, but I've also had compassion for them because everyone's experience is different. People aren't mind readers. People, you know, there are some who are more out of the box in terms of their thought process. But I think discouragement really empowers you to excel and achieve and appreciate and value the good uh, the, so those who are supporters, uh, discouragement is part of the game. And I would say that my lesson in life is learning to get up more quickly each time I get discouraged, because the sooner you do that, the sooner you um, open even more windows. And any time that I something hasn't worked out, honestly, a week later, or a short time thereafter, something even better came along that I never anticipated and would not have been able to do. So your outlook is hugely dependent upon how you um, cope and uh, come up with great strategies to overcome disappointments. But there's no person who hasn't had them. It's a part of the, it's a part of life. And honestly, it really does make those other sweet moments sweeter. I think that is very fair. Most of us here probably agree. <laughs> now, let's take two more questions from the audience. Something that actually came up quite a lot in the pre-ceremony survey we asked is what is the criteria for RSI acceptance and what are you looking for in a potential candidate? <laughs> Putting me on the spot, but that's privileged information. I can't reveal that information. But what I would just generally say, I mean, there are application criteria that you can find on the site. If you go to the CEE.org site, there's an RSI uh, sublink within that site that will give you information and you can take a look at the application. But the application is inclusive of letters of recommendation, uh, your scores of different um, from SAT to grades, transcripts, and actually more, most importantly, your essays. And I mean, the application is very thorough. I think it does a very good job of really allowing people to show who they are. What I would tell you having been on, I've been a judge in a world robotics competition. I ran RSI last year. I have uh, been a grant reviewer for Susan G. Komen. And one of the things that I would say is excellence shows through no matter what topic you're even, determining. And the biggest thing that I would recommend is not to get disheartened because whenever you're applying to college or applying to any of these things, places admit a class. So some years they need more math or some years they need more astrophysics or some years whatever. But when you try to game an application or try to not actively be authentic, wanting to please whoever it is that you think is reviewing the application, uh, your authenticity won't show through and who you are, you don't have to be someone else. You don't have to be the astrophysics interested violinist. You be who it is that you are and that has value and that will shine through. Be authentic. Um, show what you've done. Show, don't tell. So in whatever you're doing, whatever competition you're doing, I would always say know who your audience is. And, you know, it's one thing to say, I want to do this, 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 and this, but you want to really highlight, what do you want them to remember about you? What is it that you did that demonstrate these five qualities that you want them to remember? Say it's integrity or character or, you know, high achieving scores or something like that. You want to be able to make sure that you um, show who you are instead of giving a litany of, of what that is. Um, you don't have to be consuming your essays on what the most exciting nanotech, newest technology of nanotechnology or anything. So the biggest thing I would say is show your absolute best version of who you are and what it is you're passionate about. Be authentic because inauthenticity shines through and you don't have to be anyone other than you. And that is more than enough. 
Thank you so much. We have one final question. When contestants entered this year's competition, one of our essay topics was what do you envision technology will look like in the year 2050? I was hoping to throw that question over to you and hopefully you could tell us a little bit about what you think technology will look like. Well, you know, it's so funny that you say that. There was a show that none of you will know when I was young called The Jetsons. It was a cartoon. And literally it had a smart house, it had a robot, it had a smart refrigerator, it had what are now iPads, really. It was like everything could be controlled on a remote. And it seemed, I mean, the idea that any of these things would ever happen in life seemed insane, like just not so futuristic, not even conceivable in the realm of my lifetime. And the only thing that really doesn't exist today per se is like they'd have these hovercraft vehicles where you would, you know, you do a taxi in the sky kind of thing. That's probably the only thing that we're not seeing as much, but the capability is sort of there. It's just not mainstream in terms of transportation. So when I think of the future of technology, I mean, there are certain realms that I'm of course gonna have a medical bent of what they're gonna be able to do. And one of the things that they're trying to work towards now is doing remote surgeries or that kind of thing. So I think in 2050, that'll be tremendously um, advanced. However, there's the real time aspect of it that I just, again, can't fathom now achieving in real life because one of the things with surgical, with surgery, even if things are at routine, you never know what can happen. and things can change on a dime and you need a person physically there who has the experience and the ability to adapt to that. And you don't have much time. So that with lags in technology of trying to have a surgeon from across the world, be able to do, you know, completely teach someone in real time is going to be interesting. I think that's going to be more and more refined. Um, the day that you wouldn't require a person there, I can't imagine, but 2050 is quite a, a way away. Uh, I'm thinking that maybe we'll be able to have transportation in a way that, that it requires less cars on the street and more hovering ability, but who knows. Um, but my greatest, uh, I'm, I love technology that considers the end user and is human centered in design. So I would hope that all of the progress with respect to technology facilitates human interaction, not human disconnection. So I would hate to see in 2050 that nobody sees anyone in person or anything like that. So I think it's very interesting. So I, I maybe we'll, I don't know if I think in that period of time, we'll be going routinely to other planets <laughs> or Mars, but I don't know. I mean, it's all, it's all very interesting to consider. I'd love to hear what everyone uh, at your stage of the game thinks is going to happen in that period of time. Well, Dr. Wells, I think that was an incredible answer. It was fun <laughs> hearing about the TV show. I think as we get older, we also will see what seems to be sci-fi to us now turn into reality. Yeah. And for those of you who have some thoughts about 2050, feel free to put some of your ideas in the chat while we transition over to our next activity. Once again, thank you, Dr. Wells. Your speech thank you so fun. much. Thank you so much. We're Good honored to have everybody. And now, to those of you who didn't do as well as you hoped in the last Kahoot, it's time for redemption. I'd like to turn things over to Yun Soha, who will be in charge of today's second Kahoot. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Natalie. And thank you, Dr. Wells, for such an inspiring message. Um, my name is Yun Soha, and I'm a rising sophomore from Alabama, this year's head of marketing as well. Um, a fun fact about me is that I really enjoy robotics and building on to what I think might we might have in the future, I think wearable technology will also be enhanced. Um, now, it's time for yet another round of friendly competition. So please take out your device and I'd like to direct you to the following website, www.kahoot.it for a chance to win a $25 Amazon gift card. How does the mission statement of the Math and AI for Girls website begin? Is it to encourage girls to pursue, to assist it all in the pursuit of, yada, yada, yada. And this gif, I mean, this uh, picture might give you some context. Which one will it be? Got 40 answers. The correct answer was 
to help girls achieve success. And it goes on to stay at the highest levels in math and AI by offering access to resources to help them on their STEM journeys. So we, in first place, we got Spin with 973 points. And in second place, we have me, even though I'm not playing. So whoever's playing for me, thank you so much. We got Aparna, Cynthia, and Shreya close up behind. Next question. Select one animal which was mentioned during the favorite animals slide. Now for this, I put a picture of my personal favorite. It's the capybara with a little orange on his head, on its head. The Quokka, Shiba Inu, and uh, Shiny Picto were all animals that appeared on the slide. Vivian on top, followed by Aparna and Adrita. Question, multi-select. Which of these organizations is our uh, sponsor? Now, uh, you can select many answers. Automation Anywhere, DE Shaw, Bank of America, HPE, JP Morgan Chase, and or Google. All right. And the correct answer is our, um, are our amazing sponsors, Automation Anywhere, DE Shaw, HPE, and JP Morgan Chase. On the top, still Valerie, and coming in second, me, <laughs> and Adia Sam Aparna. Next question, which program was Dr. Jamie Wells the director of last year? Is it MRI, RSI, SSP, or AI for All? The correct answer is RSI. Okay. Up nine places, we have Ava Gibson. Okay. What did uh, Ms. Shukla say she is passionate about, if you've been listening to her speech? Women stepping up and having a seat at the table and um, maybe the 2050 presidential campaign. Which one will it be? The correct answer was women stepping up and having a seat at the table. And on the scoreboard, we have Adia climbing up again. I believe this is the final question, challenge question. Yun Sa Ha, head of MA, uh, the Math and AI for Girls mar marketing team, really enjoys robotics, exploring ideas, sharing experiences, and or being a part of the Math and AI for Girls team. Last one, put in your guesses. Can be all of them. And the correct answer was all of them. Good job, you guys. And on the podium, we have in third place, Sophia. In second place, Aparna. And drum roll, please. In first, we have Adia again. <laughs> she'll, be uh, she'll be taking $50. Yep, congratulations. Okay, and now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the announcement of the winners. Well, not quite. First, let's hear from one of last year's contestants and amazing team member, Maggie Bai. Okay, um, thank you, Inzo. Um, So hi, everyone. My name is Maggie Bai. I was one of the contestants of this fair competition last year, and I'm currently on the Math and Air for Girls team as a marketing and event management team member, and I'm a rising sophomore from Illinois. Besides doing STEM-related activities, I love playing the viola and the piano. Before we announce the winners, on behalf of the Math and Air for Girls team, I would like to acknowledge and congratulate the young mathematicians and computer scientists before me today who have participated in the 2022 Math and Air for Girls competition. It is due to your hard work and excellence that the Math and Air for Girls competition has been able to take place. Last year, I participated in the Math and Air for Girls competition, just like you all. Since then, I have grown tremendously with my goal of pursuing mathematics as well as computer science and creating more female representation in the STEM community, becoming closer with each day. Along the way, I gained an amazing community of girls all over the nation who are just as passionate about STEM through joining the Math and Air for Girls team. 
You all are at the very beginning of your journey in STEM, and you still have a long way to go. Don't let the results of this competition discourage you in any way. As long as you have tried your best, you're already on your way to success. This competition is about igniting the flame, embodying your passion and persistence, and it's not entirely about the results. There are still plenty of future opportunities in store for all of you, and I can't wait to see what groundbreaking mathematicians and computer scientists you all will become. You can choose to continue participating in the Math and A for Girls competition next year if you're in grades five through seven, or if you're in eighth grade, you can join the Math and A for Girls team, which I'm currently a part of. If you do decide to join the team, as I said before, you will gain an amazing community of individuals just like you. Additionally, you will be able to attend exciting events. For example, my team and some of the members of my team and I are on a California trip and in the HB garage right now. With that being said, let's announce the winners and I wish you all the best of luck. I will hand it over to Natalie. Thank you so much, Maggie. That was amazing. And I'm sure the contestants were deeply moved by your speech. So now if you'll give me a second to screen share, we're going to begin to announce the winners. So first of all, we are going to start with the rising stars, which are the top three fifth graders and top three sixth graders who are not in the top 50 overall scorers. After that, we will announce the honorable mention contestants ranked 21st through 50th, followed by the high honors 11th through 20th, and then very slowly, we will announce the top 10. This year, we also have two special awards, so stay tuned for this year's special awards. Now first, I'm going to hand it back to Yun to announce this year's Rising Stars. And this year's Rising Star Awards will be presented to the three highest scoring fifth and sixth graders who were not included in the top 50, but also impressed the judges by showing tremendous promise. Uh, these uh, recipients will be awarded a swag bag and certificate. Additionally, these are the items that will be included in this year's swag bag sponsored by HPE. The Rising Stars will receive a notebook, pen, and bag from HP's In Her Element campaign, which aims to create a more inclusive, equitable technology sector by featuring female role models. The bag also includes a power bank, face mask, HP mug, t-shirt, super pop, and magnets. This is what the certificate will look like. And now for our rising stars. In the fifth grade, we have Angelina Wan from Colorado, Aubrey Linquist from Connecticut, and Jolene He from New York. In the sixth grade, we have Kaylee John from Florida, Rhea Agarwal, from, also from Florida, and Selena Ga from Massachusetts. Congratulations to all of our rising stars. Next, the honorable mention awards will be presented to the girls who scored in the top 50, impressing us with their passion and ability. They will also be awarded a swag bag and certificate. This is a look of what the certificate uh, will look like. And these are the honorable mention recipients placed 21st through 50th. Congratulations. And now Chimay will announce the high honors recipients. The high honors recipients are the girls who placed between 11th and 20th and deeply inspired judges with their passion and ability. They'll be receiving $50, a swag bag and a certificate.
the high honors recipients are Alicia Lee from New York in eighth grade, Audrey Wang from California, also in eighth grade, seventh grader Isabella Deng from Connecticut, eighth grader Olivia Ahn from California, eighth grader Raika Chopra from California, eighth grader Samhitha Kovi from Georgia, Sophia Hu from Virginia, who's also in eighth grade, Sophia Yan from Massachusetts, also in eighth grade. Sixth grader Tara Radovicic from New Jersey. And eighth grader Yu Tong Wang from New York. Congratulations to the high honors recipients. Now I'll be handing it over to team member Kira, who will be announcing the top 10. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Kira, and I was Math and AI for Girls head problem set developer this year. I'm a rising sophomore, sophomore at Horace Mann and live in New York. I've been interested in math and computer science for a long time, competing in competitions such as AMC's Amy and even Math and AI for Girls last year. I also love poetry, baking, and bike riding. Since many of my STEM communities are so heavily male dominated, it's incredibly inspiring to see such talented female mathematicians and computer scientists in the making today. Now the top 10 contestants, given to the 10 girls who truly went above and beyond. These girls submitted clear and concise problem sets, as well as essays expressing extraordinary accomplishments, vision, and leadership. First, we will announce six through 10th in alphabetical order. The prize is $100, a swag bag, and a certificate. Advika Astana, sixth grade from Texas. We were especially impressed by her involvement in community service and her promotion of STEM activities for girls using social media. Catherine Shu, eighth grade from Iowa. Catherine has scored extremely well in many math competitions, even qualifying for JMO and making Math Counts Nationals. Tina Gao, eighth grade from Alabama. Tina not only has an impressive track record of math competition scores, qualifying for Amy and Math Counts Nationals, but also is excited to continue engaging in math competitions in the future. Vaidehi Ramachandrula, eighth grade from Wisconsin. We were very impressed with her expertise in languages, classical dancing and singing, as well as her experience with a variety of STEM competitions such as Science Bowl, FTC Robotics, Math Counts, and AMCs. Yunong Wu, sixth grade from New York. Among many other competition awards, she scored in the honor roll on the AMC8. She also plays the piano, flute, soccer, and ice hockey. And now we will announce fourth and fifth place. In addition to receiving $100, a swag bag, and a specialized certificate, these contestants will also receive a telescope from Automation Anywhere, shown here. These telescopes are amazing not only to see astronomical wonders, but because of astronomy's rich history intertwined with mathematics. Did you know that some of the first trigonometry and triangle geometry was, was developed for application to astronomy? Maybe these winners can engage in similarly revolutionary mathematical developments themselves. Adia Garg, seventh grade for, from Virginia. Last year, Adia led her FLL robotics team and they qualified for Worlds. She has also scored highly in AMCs, plays the viola and programs. Angie Huang, eighth grade from Minnesota. Angie has not only scored highly in competitions qualifying for Amy and Math Count States, but is also studying calculus at the University of Minnesota. She's also a competitive pianist and enjoys writing, tennis, and watching sports. I will now announce the recipient of this year's special award, the Tenacity Award. 
This year, a contestant discovered a mistake in the official Math and AI for Girls problem set solution and reached out to us. For her bravery and leadership, this contestant will receive an additional $100 and a specialized certificate. This year's Tenacity Award recipient is Sophia Jin, eighth grade from Iowa. Congratulations. And now we will announce this year's Computation Award recipient. Chinmay Goyal, last year's Comp Computation Award recipient, will present this award. Thank you, Kira. This year's Computation Award recipient is Catherine Shu, eighth grade from Iowa. Congratulations. Catherine's performance is extremely consistent. She had the second highest problem set score last year. Not only was her problem set extremely accurate and well-reasoned, she also included cute cartoons for us. We did not give any bonus points for them, but they made her problem set the best in every aspect. And now Natalie will announce this year's top three contestants. Thank you to the Math and AI for Girls team members for helping me announce the winners. And now for the top three. This year's third place scorer will receive a telescope, a swag bag, a certificate, and a $300 cash prize. This year's third place is Sophia Jin, eighth grade from Iowa. Sophia had the highest essay score in this year's competition. In her second essay, she carefully categorized key changes in technology. Her discussions of in vitro meat, 3D printing organs to prevent organ rejection, and quantum computing demonstrated genuine curiosity about the world and creative ideas grounded in a strong knowledge of current scientific achievements. The judges appreciated her passion, ability, and ambition for the future. Congratulations, Sophia. We will now announce this year's second place scorer. who will receive, once again, a telescope, a swag bag, a certificate, and a $500 cash prize. This year's second place is Anika Rajaram, eighth grade from California. As one of last year's top 10 contestants, Anika has returned with yet another exceptionally strong entry, earning one of the highest problem set scores. In addition for qualifying for the Amy and being one of the top chess players nationally, top three in her age group, you may remember this fact from earlier in the presentation. She also coaches a local math team. Her technology in 2050 essay was vivid and well-written and her attention to detail was evident in her creative naming of new technologies. Congratulations, Anika. And finally, we are about to announce this year's first place winner. The first place will receive a telescope, a swag bag, a certificate, and a $1,000 cash prize. Now this year's grand winner of the 2022 Math and AI for Girls competition is, drum roll please, Adrita Samantha, eighth grade from Massachusetts. Adrita scored exceptionally well in the problem set, receiving a near perfect score. Additionally, her experiences as a TA, a research intern, and a USA CO Gold and USA JMO contestant were extremely impressive. In her essays, Adrita expressed a clear passion aiming to be at the forefront of the development of technology in 2050. Her leadership and ambition truly set her apart. Now, once more, I would like to congratulate Adrita as well as all of this year's award recipients and this year's contestants. Congratulations to all of you. You are truly the best and you deserve it. And finally, that concludes today's award ceremony. Now let's thank our judges, Dr. Artie Garg and Anjana Prabhakar. Let's also thank today's guest speaker, Dr. Jamie Wells. Let's thank our sponsors, HPE, Automation Anywhere, J.P. Morgan Chase, and D.E. Shaw, as well as a few of the crucial team members from each of these organizations who have been invaluable to Math and AI for Girls. We would also like to thank Dan Plotnick from Bergen County Math, 
Mr. Xavier Guzman from the All Saints Catholic School, and Sonali Parekh, who is one of our main contacts from HP. Also, here is the amazing Math and AI for Girls team. It couldn't have been possible without them. And finally, we will be in touch with the winner to confirm their addresses, and we will notify all of you about future events. If you have any suggestions, feedback, or questions about the competition or the award ceremony, you can reach out to our email, mathandaiforgirls at yahoo.com. Thank you for coming and for inspiring all of us here at Math and AI for Girls. Have an amazing day.